in customer success, a lot of us could stand to have a never say die attitude where we are like our counterparts in sales, where I gave an example where I literally drove three hours yeah. to get a meeting with a customer. Ready? Yep. What's up, lifers, and welcome to The Daily Stand Up with Lifetime Value, where we're giving you fresh new customer success ideas every single day. I got my man JP here. JP, do you want to say hi? What's going on, y'all? <laughs> and we've got Rob with us. Rob, do you want to say hi? Assalamu alaikum, lifers. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> and I am your host. And shalom. My name is Dylan Young. <laughs> And I don't know if you can tell, guys, but we are in person, live and in person, coming to you from Rob's home sweet home, the crib, beep, 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 beep. the crib. All identifying information has been concealed so that the not my plastic plants, the rabid fans cannot find where Mr. Rob Zambito, daddy's little meatball, if you could see his shirt, says. And once again, we're here because we have just wrapped up the Customer Success Collective's CS Festival here in Boston. We're doing a recap of the coolest, most interesting, most thought-provoking topics or conversations we had at the festival. And JP, I think you've got one for us yeah. this time. <clears throat> yeah. Maybe figured, a few. I got I got a few, actually, um, that were really either like, they could be eye-opening or affirming. You know, I'm I'm still okay, yeah, relatively yeah. new in the space, so sometimes it's just um, good to see affirming things because I haven't been in in the in the space as long. So hearing those affirming things can be really great for you know things that I, I think I should be pushing myself maybe more on. Um, so <clears throat> I'll say that one of them, and I'm and I'm sort of gonna say it the way I wrote it, but the, <laughs> I think there's more to okay. Caveating it, yeah, the yeah. Cave, caveat. So. Um, be annoying, uh, and hound executives. That's why they have executive assistants. Oh. Now, that's what I wrote, but I think that on this on this topic, and I think that I've actually had a couple conversations with people about this. Is really about ownership. It's about like driving accounts. It's about the idea that, like, when you when you take ownership of something, like we've all had that experience where. If you have to call into some sort of office and you have no other choice and, you know, they're going to be busy for some reason, you may have to call them multiple times. I've definitely called places where I've waited for like 40 minutes mm -hmm. and then the phone hung up on me. And of course, oh. I wanted to be like, oh, yeah. screw these people. But I had to call them back. I had to get yeah. this thing done. There was no other option. And to me, I think about what can make me a better CSM, and I think it's to be more annoying. Because I think some of us, I think that the annoying thing maybe comes more natural to sales in terms of they're not, um, they're going to take more of that initiative. And I think like in CS, we could definitely stand, and I mean, I'll speak for myself, maybe some people that are more seasoned, they, they get it. But I think for me, it's, you know, I'm just going to just take more initiative and just be someone who, you know, will reach out, of course, still with value, like not just reach out to reach out, but that when I need to speak to someone to get something done, it's to do it's 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 not it shouldn't get to a point where when my manager comes to me and then is like, hey, what's mm -hmm. going on with this? I'm like, right. oh, because it's stalled out. Right. Yep. I think I call that being a bulldog. Um, right. Like. You can call it whatever. I think yeah. ownership is probably healthier, sexier. <laughs> I just call that being a bulldog, right? And I think sales does it really good because I th they follow the money. Right. If they think there's an opportunity there, they're going to get it done. I think on the flip side, CSM, CS struggles with it perhaps because we're too empathetic. We feel too much. We don't want to get in the other person's way. We want to be helpful. We don't want to take their time. And I think to the point of what that person was saying is, they have EAs for a reason. It's like, well, that person has somebody who's managing their time for them. Right. So don't worry about that. And you've got a thing you're trying, you got to get done. And in many cases, it is driving that forward provides value to that customer. Yeah. That 
they just haven't connected those dots or they're super busy. It's not even like they're trying to ignore you. Just like they weren't trying to hang up on you. Their, their phone system just sucks sort right. of thing. But Rob, what do you think about it? Yeah. I mean, this drives me crazy. I, I think the, the way this came up in a somewhat controversial way was interesting. I think my friend Ashley, she mentioned sometimes you should just put a meeting on the calendar and this is controversial. Just put a I meeting on like this. I didn't like, this. I know you didn't like this. <laughs> now I don't like this either. I especially don't like this when I'm on the receiving end, but it's just to stretch your minds for a second. Like the, the advice was consider just putting a meeting on the calendar with your client and just see if they show up. And I was talking with somebody after he was like, you know, I've done this a hundred times and the one or two times that it's worked out, somebody actually showed up or they said, oh, hey, look, I haven't been meaning to ignore you. I, I actually do want to meet with you, but this time won't work. And I was like, okay, that's cool. So, so the point is like, I don't stand by that advice. Because but what happens the other 98 times? You're wasting your time. It, I, I don't think that's it. Yeah. I don't think it's a neutral result. Actually true. Yeah. I don't think there is. It's actually a, net negative. I think it is always, it sits on one or other, yeah. the other side of the fence. It's right. either positive in so much as they say like, oh, I wasn't trying to ignore yeah. you. And thank you so much for being persistent. But much more often, right. I think it has a negative Yeah. So then result. should we maybe wait to do it when there's nothing to lose? If that's you've been point. trying to reach out that's to somebody, fair, and maybe that's it's more like a maybe last that's where result. The yeah. comes right. from, that sure. last resort, not a... Yeah, I think there's so this, many creative solutions, yeah. though, that there's very rarely a last yeah. result. Right. Hmm. The, 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 resort. To me, it's not the tactic, it's, it's the principle, that. right? The principle is... In customer success, a lot of us could stand to have a never say die attitude where we are like our counterparts in sales, where I gave an example where I literally drove three hours yeah. to get a meeting with a customer, three hours to get a meeting with a customer. And they didn't know that they didn't even expect me. I think I sent them an email beforehand, like, hey, I'm going to be in the area. <laughs> I was not going to be in the area, but I did it. Well, you and were. They, Only for them. We, yeah, exactly. <laughs> we, ended, we did end up closing that deal and retaining that deal. And a large part of it was because we actually showed up in person. And I'm not, look, I, I know these are extreme examples. This is not what I'm recommending. In fact, I, I mentioned I have this like whole non-responsive customer playbook that you can use that mm -hmm. kind of graduates to this phase. Mm -hmm. But we're talking like last resorts here where you have nothing to lose. I do think CS could stand to be more assertive or mm -hmm. someone someone described it as aggressive. Yeah, I, don't think it, was... I don't think of it as aggressive. That's... <laughs> But yeah, too much. So if it was me, I apologize. Yeah. No, no, no. No, it was, no, it was not you. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, more more assertive <laughs> with with getting on our customers' calendars. Do we have time for one more? Let me see. Let me, you, see, let me uh, see if I got. Well, some. I just wonder if you have anything to retort to that, or or. No. Well, I I do have something that I I do think is in general hot take ish. Mm. So that that I shared was more just like, hey, I can stand to be this. Mm -hmm. But a I want to just right. But something that shifted my perspective, y'all gonna love this. Micromanagement may not be bad in the beginning as a way to help uh drive a new behavior. So I'll just say that maybe in a previous role, there was a competition. Maybe. Unconfirmed. There was a competition for like CS referrals or CS qualified leads. Yeah. Right. So this is a, a competition. But what may happen is, okay, so that was incentivized, but then that may now become baked in so that mm -hmm. it actually becomes a KPI. So at first it's like, hey, if you do this, you get a little extra. Then it's going to become something that's in, right? So like the 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 contest is not micromanaging. However, if you are trying to uh, drive a, a specific thing among your CSM, so not micromanaging for the hell of it, as if we're gonna do everything, but micromanaging in the beginning, because it's like, hey, it looks like as a team, this is a specific area that we could really get better in. And so you focus on that because there is a need for it, because you're trying to drive that. I think that that's like the one instance for me where I can think that micromanagement may be actually like a good thing as typically like I don't think of it as a good thing at all. And you do mean micromanagement specifically as like they're checking in on what you're doing. 
Right. Every day, if not multiple times a day. Whoa. whoa making sure whoa. that. Whoa. whoa. Uh, yeah, maybe I'm thinking of like the the worst. No, oh, yeah, I think that's of this, but they're they're making sure they're minding your p's and q's for you, sort of thing. Not mod. Okay, so there's a difference. Not monitoring me, but I, I'm thinking about micro manage in terms of like the micro is where we're managing this specific behavior so yeah. not Instead micro the outcome right okay right okay uh rob what do you think about that you know it's interesting because we're talking about in the context of new employee onboarding right i think in that too yeah. that's why i said in the beginning so, it is more in the beginning. Sorry for context. Yeah, I think when, when a lot of us think about this, we think about like boiler room type sales environments. Yeah. Where it's like, you know, people start on day one and it's like, you're going to make 70 dials per day or something like that. I actually think that the interesting thing that happens in cultures like those is even though it sucks to start, people do develop an affinity for that behavior and appreciation of that behavior after a certain period of time. Right. Um, like I've, I've heard the phrase embrace the suck before, which I think is like kind of cheesy and stupid, but at the same time, I also get why that works. It's almost like the same reason uh, pledging a, a fraternity or a, soror or a sorority is like sticky in people's heads and they learn to appreciate certain, or it's the reason why I like me washing dishes when I was a teenager made me appreciate that activity so much more. For recruits, look back fondly on their time in boot camp. Yeah, and right. And their drill instructors. Right. Yeah. So this this isn't to, I'm not saying that it's a good thing. I'm just saying it is an effect that it's happens. A it's a thing. It's a thing. <laughs> so I think most of it boils down to expectation setting. I think if, imagine you start a job and on, after one week on the job, your manager says, all right, you're going to make 40 dials for references. You're like, oh, are you serious? I didn't think I signed up for this. But if you heard that in the interview process, then you signed up for it. You're like, all right, cool. I can, I can just power through that. And I know that it's not yep. the long-term state of the business. That's a good caveat, by the way. It's not, because I did have that happen to me at a previous place, seriously, mm -hmm. where they turned it into a sales like they were like, yeah, we need you to make this many cold calls in a day. And it's so easy to say like, oh, this isn't what I signed up for. I think it might be important to turn an empathetic eye towards the way in which our customers experience this when trying to onboard our solutions. It's just another version of change management. Like your company needs to evolve. They're trying to find new solutions. And one of those happens to be a new motion that you're now going to be responsible for. It's no, and I've done this a, a million times in your same shoes where I make a stink about it. And wouldn't you know, in three months, I'm looking for a new job. And it's because I wasn't down for the, I didn't, I was in it for me and not for the, the larger collective good, which was trying to move the company forward. And I think both of those are fine. But you've, when you're, when it, it's all about you, you got to be prepared for, for how your company makes decisions Based on that, I just personally had a breakthrough in explaining There you that go. <laughs> <laughs> Fire right. that therapist. Which is all this is, guys. This is a yeah. huge, convoluted therapy session for me. <laughs> That's our time. Thanks again to Customer Success Collective for yes. putting on such an awesome event. Uh, we're going to have more of these episodes in the future, but uh got to say goodbye for now. Bye-bye. You've been listening to The Daily Stand-Up by Lifetime Value. Please note that the views expressed in these conversations are attributed only to those individuals on this recording and do not necessarily reflect the views and opinions of their respective employers. For all inquiries, please reach out via email to dylan at lifetimevaluemedia.com. Find us on YouTube at Lifetime Value and find us on the socials at lifetimevaluemedia.com. Until next time.